There he is, Mr. Green, officially. What, Thank you. Hey. What the fuck is up, what, man? <laughs> What's up, bro? How you doing? Uh, hey, third time's a charm, right? That's yeah, right, man. Yeah, man it's, <laughs> I don't it's, juggle out, fuck. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Green. I this no <laughs> <laughs> we pre- appreciate you sticking with it, man. We're glad we're glad to have you on. No, no, I fuck yeah, dude. Like I said, I fuck with you guys. Hey, I'm glad we got to meet. You know, that's fucking uh, definitely fun. Like you said, you know, maybe not executed. But it was fun as fuck doing the podcast. Hopefully, we all do it again next year. Yeah. Fuck yeah. So yeah. so we met Mr. Green during the gathering. Um, he was uh, set up right next to us at the Replicon Radio uh, booth, right? Uh, yeah, man. I, dude, I don't, know, I don't know if I met... Uh, I don't know if I met a, a, another chill motherfucker like him at the mm-hmm. gathering. Man. I don't know, man. Yeah. Like cool shit. You, you know, man, was, always stay optimistic. Always stay optimistic. Yeah, yeah, Everybody's man. always down, you know? Fuck that, you know? Yeah, of no, course. It was great, man. It was cool being next to you. You know, you was doing your thing. Those, those shirts were fire. I, it, I fucked up. I got, I got it. Not this one, but maybe next one. I'll do the uh, chicken hunt. I know it. I'm just fucked up. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. We put. You we, learn about why. You learn about why. You'll be like, damn, no way. So. Okay. I forgot you appeared on the show. Cause, so during our yeah, gathering yeah. episode, Mr. Green did show up and he, he tried to sing chicken hunt. It was a mess. It wasn't your fault. The fucking. The, the, it was not. Uh, conducive the, the environment wasn't conducive for a uh, karaoke no, event it was, yeah, it was so cool. it's not your fault like you know the sound check you know like <laughs> that was cool though seeing scum play at like noon you know? is that yeah. who that was scum yeah yeah it was scum and insane poetry they did about three songs and then i think jp the hustler did a song and then they dipped and then another group came on because okay. it was a rock and roll band at first that was doing the guitar you yeah. know when you heard the yeah you know? the sound, it was like sound checking and we were just sitting man at, and then you were hell bent on trying to do some karaoke. I knew it wasn't going to work. <laughs> I know. I was, sit, I was sitting there thinking in my head. I was like, man, this, this ain't going to work. What are you doing? What, are you, what, are, you, what are you doing? Trying to have some fun. Uh, there would have been a line. Line for days. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so so what's, your, what's your affiliation with Replicon Radio? Okay, so like they they my big, big homie. So, like, okay, uh, it, it's going to tie in with my origin story. It's just wild how the world's so small. And you always meet people, and then you never know how they're going to come back in your life. You know what I mean? Right. Good or bad, good or bad, you know. But it was good with Replicon, obviously. You should be me, you know. We're doing our thing. Shout out to Replicon, you know. They're giving me this opportunity that definitely gonna push me to the next level, you know. So what are you doing for them then? So uh, more or less, uh, I guess you could say I'm the first official, unofficial artist, you know. If you, you tidy your manager, you know, always being in the video. Your producer always, you know, one. You're doing the Replicon. No, no, I'm just kidding. You know. <laughs> I'm a nice shit. I'm a sick nice shit, you know. But. <laughs> But, so uh, so you're 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 rapping and repping Replicon Radio as as yeah, a rapper. Yeah, like I'm on Philly. Yeah, like like uh, the Dino's helping me out. You know, do the damn thing. You know, like uh, I own my shit. Like uh, I'm I'm signed up. Like my thing is Wicked Ties Records. You know, Mr. Green. You know, da da da. And then I got my in-house producer shots on my brother Sir Daryl. And then uh, me and him split. You know, like he's Mike Mike Clark. You know, what I mean, like it's you know, because at first I had like the one dude like they had like that was kind of dick me around. You know, like uh, oh we got to only four hours or oh, uh, you know, like I said, it all ties in the story, you know, just if you, if you really want to do something, it's, it's on you, you know, good or bad, like I always say, you know. Yeah, I feel that, or, man. You know, yeah, you know, like how some people are like, oh, I was dealt this hand or da 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 It's like, well, yeah, but I guarantee you, you're not trying to be like that, but everybody has a fucking sadder story. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like get out the violin, you know, fuck it, you know, <laughs> you know. So you're, you're out there hustling, man. That's, that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. It's, I feel no, you're, I look young as fuck. I, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm 32, you know what I mean? So I, I look like I'm still 12 years old. You know? <laughs> I feel that. Well, well, yeah, I'll, I'll be the next I'll, I was just going to say, man, yeah, I'm, you know, you, I, you walked in that podcast tent and, like, the Replicon radio setup looked the most official to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, they've been doing their thing way longer than I, uh, I knew them, yeah. you know, obviously. But I'm a younger cat than what they are. Like, they're old school juggalos like you. So uh, they've been doing it for hellas, and uh, you know they've they've always been a fan. And I think that's what they seen out of me, like because I, I was not one of these one local dudes who's like holding my nuts on stage but not being prepared, or you know what I mean. Like I promote my shit or the show four months in advance. I'm not that one dude like, oh, it's the day of the show. If you need tickets, hit me up. You know, yeah. I'm doing deals. You know, like I got music coming out. Like I'm legit. Like you know, I'm a certified artist. Got the blue check. You know, whatever. You know, like okay. I own all my rights. You, you say you're Mr. Green. I'm coming for your ass. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's what's up, bro. So, so people can yeah, find yeah. you. People- and that's like, you know, since I, I you know, uh, it, you know, there's so many of us, you know, that was like, oh, I'm gonna do it. You know, well, if you really want to do it, you can do it. You know, so fuck, I'm, I'm doing it. You know. Yeah, man. We, well, that's 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 uh, 
we we appreciate that man that's how that's kind of the mindset we've always had man like we get ideas and we're like let's fucking try it bro let's throw it out right. you know we'll, yeah. we'll fucking... and, uh, it's, like they say some of the people like let music play that you don't like but honestly somebody likes it you never yeah. know yeah, yeah. man and that's you got up. and you got to fail you know you got to fail to figure right. out oh, what definitely. to do right you know before i made some mama for sure yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what's up, bro. So, um, so tell. Let's get into your origin story. So, how did yeah, how did you how did you discover I'm ICP? Baby. Right, right. I'm a '90s baby, and uh, first off, foremost, uh, I'm actually from Peru. I was adopted, and then uh, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. You know, so I shout out St. Louis. You know, so uh, I came here when I was like one or two. So I really never knew nothing about there, but my mom and dad told me they stayed at the American Embassy. It was wild and crazy. You know, fucking third world country. You know, so yeah. Shout out to all of them, you know, God bless, you know, bless us up, hope we all good. But uh but then I came you know, from the land of the free, as some would say. And uh I've been here ever since. Uh I'm a nineties kid, so Ninja Turtles was my shit. That's kinda of the first introduction of music, seeing the Ninja Turtle rap and uh the first move, you know, I had the soundtrack and shit. <laughs> of uh, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great so, you shit. know, uh, uh and T power, you know, turtle power shit, you know. And then the vanilla ice movie and Ninja Turtles too, so that kind of was always like, rap was always going to be there, but I just didn't know because I was a little, little kid, you know. So when you guys were probably getting down, I was probably just now, like, stepping off the porch. You yeah. Know, like, work, you know, because you guys were like, you know, Kids, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, like I, I relate way more to '90s. I was born in '84, yeah. but so I mean, okay, yeah. by the time I remember yeah, yeah. shit, it was '90s. You know, I mean, I'm with you 100. Right, percent like, like, yeah, yeah. Yep. Like, I started like realizing shit like '93, '94. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, dude. Okay, so uh, the music wasn't really there until I was about nine years old, and that's '99. Well, we all know what happened in '99. Mm-hmm. Mason Joker Brothers, you know. So I never seen the great Malenko. Uh, thing on MTV, but I seen a commercial with my grandma when she lived in the city. And we were just watching TV and like we turned on MTV, and it was the one that was like, We got two things, you know, it's, it's the bizarre, bizarre era because you know, fucking Shaq has the blonde tip, you okay. know, it's the fire and the uh, twist is on the leather, you know, and the blood comes out like, well, We love yeah, you, you know, that yeah. class. Yep, 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 yeah. that's a great that commercial. Was my first scene of oh, okay, like, that summer when Jumper Brothers came out, you know, like when the album came out. Uh, cause it was in May, I think. Right? Yeah. I mm-hmm. believe, uh, yeah. So it had been that summer. Uh, we had a family trip. Well, my uh, family friend of a trip. You know, like, they're basically like my cousins. Well, their actual cousin came, and she was kind of like a little golfier chick with her brother. But they had the amazing Jump Brothers, and I was like a little kid with the PlayStation too. You know, so everybody's like, "Oh, yeah, little kid, you can hang out with us." You know, they wanted to check out the PlayStation too. <laughs> and I remember putting in the Jump Brothers the first intro, like you know. Yeah, just trying to get something for the old man, you know? You know, <laughs> you know, you know that classic shit. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. But I really, you know, I'm a little kid, so I really don't know who these are. You know, and then, then I see in the commercial, and I put it together, like, oh, okay. So then, like, I, I remember was, we had a mom and pop uh, radio or, you know, CD store. And my mom took me in, and I remember going up to the guy, and I was like, I want an ICP Joker's card. And he looked at me like, what the fuck, every little kid? <laughs> but that fire around the time, Bizarre Bizarre was out. So he just, like, went up to the... You know, the ICP selection is picked it out, and that was probably the most copy. So I got I, my first actual CD was uh, The Eye, the okay. one with Brady Hill you Star. Know, you know, it's like, when, like uh, when they did the Bizarre, Bizarre set last year at the Gathering, I, I wanted them to do Radio Star so bad, but that's been so dope, you know? Like, think I, about a, a Just listen to that. Right, the way Shag rap. Yeah. Like, on that song, writer song like that, that would have been hard. Oh, like, yeah. He's like, yeah. wild, wild, wild. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, That's got well, crystal. Yeah, the one with the yeah. eyes got crystal ball on it, right? Uh, I think yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Fucking one of my favorite. It's well, as far as Jekyll Brothers and Bizarre, I would say those are the most cinematic level albums they've right. ever put out. And that's, and that's the crazy era going because like a lot of my thing is like you know the Rubicons. They got down, you know, like Ringmaster, Riddlebox there. Yeah. You know, so they're they're riding it all. Looks like you guys riding it all the way up. I was coming in riding the jump was like. Well, that's a beautiful I, time to come know, in. Like, oh, so, yeah. so you're what, like 11, 12 right. years old around that time, right? Yeah, yeah, bro. And so, uh, I was uh, that Halloween. I remember like getting getting that, but not really knowing Twisted, but have you know, knowing Twisted from the album. So I really didn't know Twisted, but I was listening to ICP. Well, then uh, at school, there was this one other kid that listened to ICP. You know what I mean? You know how it goes. You know, you see one up the ninja, you're like, hey, what up, dude? Right, you know, what yeah. up? So he was like, yeah, I got an older brother. I got one CD, but he got some more. He's seen him, da 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 
So then we start, start kicking it. And you know how that goes. You know, you build a family, you know. Yep. So uh, mm-hmm. we got down, you know, and uh, when, uh, so going in the sixth grade, you're like, waiting for the sixth, going in the sixth grade was wild. You know, because all these kids are listening to, like, good Charlotte and other fucking pop <laughs> shit. You know, these cute little weird kids are fucking coming in every, you know how it is. It's oh, like, yeah, yeah. All that fake punk shit. shit. <laughs> right, right. Especially out where I'm at. Because, like, you got to say, like, uh, you guys are from, like, the Ohio area, right? Yes, sir. Yep. What's the big city for you? I mean, Columbus is like yeah, all yeah, over. So I, so it, what I say is basically like with Columbus suburbs, but still like Columbus. Like you say yep. that, but they don't know. But you like St. Louis. It's like, oh, okay, I know. Yeah, it's the same here. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, pretty like, much like, yep. With the rap shit, I say like, I'm the Mr. Green of St. Louis, like how Bun B says he's uh, of Austin, but he's really from Port Arthur. Okay. Know? But everybody assumes he's from fucking. Austin, because he's so big and yeah, Texas. I mean, you don't want to rep Port Arthur. Like, give me a fucking break. Right, like, right, right, right. <laughs> right. And, you know, like, they probably have a buzz out there for sure because they're local. But, you know, like they say, somebody's going to gravitate you wherever you stay. That, that's so. like me being and in Columbus so and repping, like, I, I, oh, Whitehall represent. Well, like, give it, me a fucking break. Right, right. <laughs> it's funny. It sound right on the song, but. St. Louis sounds so much better. It's like, oh, okay, I know that. Exactly. You know? All the rappers you know. from Columbus don't represent Columbus. They move and represent wherever the fuck they move. Yeah, ain't that to. some shit? Busy, and bu- a lot of St. Louis drivers will rep St. Louis, but they'll live like in Atlanta or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. They like, have a house out there, but, you know. But what's funny, we have a lot of other artists or, like, rappers and entertainers that live in St. Louis. Like, my dad, like, uh, my, I, my, I come from a grocery family, so my dad's a butcher. And uh, he said back in the day, Geezer, you know, Geezer from Black Saver was at the store. All Cognito came up and was like, hey, let me get some me. And my dad was like, you fucking geezer? He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a house out here, you know. Oh wow! So cool. <laughs> he's from, you say he's from Black Sabbath. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's the drummer back in the day. But yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's so many people that have like a house in St. Louis that you wouldn't even think about. All right, so, so you know, I could I could probably have a I could probably have some long conversations with your dad because I was a butcher for a long time. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like I for real, like I could probably cut up a motherfucking deer better than a lot of people just from seeing him. But yeah. it's definitely an art crowd. Like you see these old dudes all shaking and shit, but right when they start cutting meat. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've I've worked with plenty of them guys. You're, you're man. speaking Carver's language. Why do you think they call him Carver, man? <laughs> you know? Yep. That's what's up. So, that was one of my first gimmicks, the butcher boy. You know, like oh yeah. You know, oh, that's like, sweet. You know, <laughs> like if you fuck with Game of Thrones, like uh, in one of the episodes, like the the butcher boy gets killed, and like the mound says, like your little butcher boy fucking cries. You know, no, you know, just like dying yeah, yeah. with that. Just, like, he says, uh, say, you know, we say the prayer for the wolf. He's like, we well, should have said the prayer for the butcher boy. You know, like, Hell yeah. and that, that, like around then we were doing like a little kind of gimmick with that. You That's know? dope. You know, like, That's dope, bro. And everybody likes, you know. So St. Louis. Uh, I've and, always been the same. I mean, so. so yeah, like. So what's the, um, what about, what about Tech Nine and Nelly and shit like that? Let's, let's okay, talk about yeah, that. Like, especially now, like, okay, so Nelly was actually my first actual rap CD I bought. Because at first when I was getting into music, I was really in like, all my brothers, are big. I'm the only child, but like all my baby homies were all like punk rockers, like doing rock and roll and shit. Like, like they're called Five Across the Space, doing shit where like the clowns were playing at the same clubs and shit. Oh, cool. But they were on the punk rock shit, you know, like Black Flag, Bad Religion, No Facts, you know, like all that shit. But they were doing it too, but it was just a different aspect. But this is kind of the same way, like, fuck, dude, why wait for somebody to sign it? We can just do it ourselves, you know? Yeah. So. You know, with the Juggalo scene, that's kind of how we took it off. The same aspect, like kind of like the Eshaan, like doing one thirty-minute songs, but doing twenty on a tape. So somebody might find one, you know. And we were doing like a lot of Jack, like like that, I'm trying to get ahead of the South. So me and this kid got down. You know, Juggalo family. My first show was uh, Hell's Pit. I was, I was like a little kid. Like my mom and dad ain't gonna let me go until I was about fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. I was about when I was to a show though, called know? Hell's Pit. Yeah, right. <laughs> Like, my dad took me. It was the funniest shit because uh, the Wiki Wonka tour was the year before, and I remember I was saving up, and I was going to go. And then, like, the last minute, they were like, ah, you let go, little kid. <laughs> oh, and man. I was so bummed, too. Like, like, when all the homies were leaving on the car, and then you're just standing on the fucking end of the street, like, man, fuck you all. That sucks, <laughs> yeah. Man, that's that, that, that was a lot of people's first that I remember. That was a lot of people's yeah. first, right. first tour. So I didn't get to go, so I, but I went to Hell's Pit the year after. And I remember my old man took me, and he was like, bro, I don't know who had more fun. 
you in there or me outside in the car watching all these motherfuckers. <laughs> you know? Wait, I'm so like, so, yeah, so your pop your pops sat outside in the car while you went in the show? Yeah, bro, straight straight. And then like at the end, like towards the end of the time, I remember he stood out like the old man. Everybody's all tripping a bag on. He's all looking around like Wow, <laughs> that's cool, man. And what the fuck did I just take my son to? <laughs> that's funny. Like my like my dad took me to my first couple ICP shows. Like I was about four, yeah. 14 when I first went. So right, right. it's a similar vibe, but my dad was like a hard rocker kind of guy. So he was like, Yeah, let's fucking go. Like I'll take you, you know. But right. but he like he protected me and shit. Like if you're gonna go, I'll just wait, you know. But then like the next one I went with the homies, like after that was Hollow Wicked, and that was like I remember my first but you know, like your first, like you're, you remember because you're still new to it. You you never you seen documentary and shit. Yeah. But my second one, that's when I had the most fun. Was lit. Like Jay slapped my hand. You know, like my my big homie got me on front of the stage. So like you know, right when Jay came out, the fucking because uh, it was when they he came out with the pig head on Halloween. Oh, dope. And fucking yeah, bro. And then like doing crowd service, like because I, I I'm short, but then I was really short. So I remember being in the pit <laughs> with my face paint. And getting in with all the big homies and like just on their big expensive jerseys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know bro. I, I was always a little. I'm a little dude too, so like it was always fu- kind of fun to like. I would let them throw me around. I would get in the mosh pit, and these motherfuckers would throw me around. I would let them pick me up and right. crowd surf me and throw me and shit. Like, like it was cool, kind of like you know, getting to be like the dude. Like they just, I mean, they looked out for you and shit, but they were having fun just like <laughs> pushing me like ten right. people away. I was the opposite. I was the one throwing you guys. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I remember just I remember like crowd surfing and just walking up to the biggest guy in the back yeah. and be like, "Hey man, like I would give him this like he like, "All right, he would fucking I, launch me." That happened to me all the time, dude. People would come up to me and just tap me on the shoulder, "Hey, pick me up." I'm like, "Oh fuck." <laughs> yep. Oh shit. That's fun, man. Yeah, that that was my first show, Hell Spit, and then my second one was Hollow Wicked, and that's when I went with the homies. So that was fun. Hell um, yeah. You know like all stars and then everything after until about like 2017 or 2007 2009 like you say everybody always takes a break it's kind of growing up you know like dating a girl eventually you know got her pregnant had a kid you know i had, had to step up you know you know yep, yep. like i remember selling my uh my two prize jerseys at the time was uh, a juggalo baseball jersey and the all white dark lotus mm, yep I, I had that i had that one. Ooh, i had I, that. God. Bro, I remember wearing that at school. Because I, I live out in the sticks, you know, for real. But we're still on the edge of St. Louis. But it's all fucking, you know, it's all mismatched. But it's definitely some fucking hick-ass motherfucker. Sure. And I remember having the white one on in, uh, like, eighth grade being in, in the high school for summer school. And then all the summer all the high school kids, like, what the fuck, you know? And, like, pushed me. And I remember, like, motherfucker, this is my white dirty fuck kid. You know, like, you know, <laughs> trying to bang with these older kids, you know? But, but yeah, dude, like, it was, you know, just. Becoming a dad, you know, doing the damn, you know. Yep, I know. I did the same shit, bro. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like, I always say, for, for father, you know, if your kid happy, then you're happy. But you might not be happy for yourself, mm. you know. And you need to be both, you know. I mean, you can't be the one to be happy for your kid and ride it out. Because I know a lot of real men that did that, stay with the old lady or took care of the kids. When they didn't have to. Because a lot of motherfuckers don't nowadays. We, let's all be real. We got a lot of homies that we used to be homies that have kids that don't, don't do shit. Right, sure. Oh, Especially yeah. me. Like I said, I got, I'm a 90s kid from an old juggalo family that's not even there no more. I'm, the la- I'm you know, like, not trying to be like that, but like, I'm the last remnants of it. Like, yeah. uh, my last, second to last album, last Ronin, you know, I did like a tribute to the uh, Ninja Turtles fame, but you know how Michael Lambs was the last one. You know, oh, yeah, I'm one. reading that I'm, right now. Yeah, bro, and I got my old big old homies Ray hoodie on in the album it's oh, three nice. I'm, That's I'm swimming in but, it, <laughs> but it's a remnant, you know because i'm the last one of us yeah you know like That's i remember dope. him like not even giving it to me like i don't know how the fuck i got it. <laughs> you know? yeah but it's yes. just like that that you know that brotherly love still there so you know i always rep them because they they made they made mr green more or less they didn't maybe put the g in it but they they helped start it you know yeah we did the, so like i said like me and him we got down me, uh, his brother, his big brother, you know, got us in or got him in. I got more down, started listening to Esham, twisted everybody from there. Like I said, I was just now getting exposed to music, so it was like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, I'm, I'm down. You yeah. know what I mean? Like being the little homie of the little of the little brother. So I was like the little little brother, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they were all cool with me, whatnot. Like you know, the first dude smoked blunts with me, da da, you know, drink, you know, tell me about girls and everything. You know, like 
being brothers. You know, so we're doing doing shows, and then uh, they knew a cat in St. Louis that they went to school with that was in a rap group, and they were starting to do shows with the clowns, like opening it up for them. And sure. Shit. So then we got the idea, like, fuck these the third minute, let's do it. And then that's when uh, me and him were kind of bullshitting me and my boy, the uh, the homeboy, the little brother, and uh, we were doing cassette tapes. You know, the old school one mic one, and we were handing them out at school, selling them at five bucks a pop. <laughs> oh wow! You know? Sweet. And they were all like. You know, because it was new to people, like, oh, you guys rap? Yeah. You know, like I said, rap, it's, it's not really common, you know? That's like, one of my regrets, not- man, is that we didn't get into it when we were in school, man. Yeah. Like, we were, like, right yeah. out of school when we started doing that shit. Especially, like, when people give you money at school for your tape. That was a whole, like, that's kind of like a high being on Yeah, stage. Like, I bet. Oh, it's like you be the kid. Like, all right, yeah, five bucks. I'll print you up one. Especially know? back like, then. Especially back then, not that many people are doing that shit. Now everybody and their mama fucking raps, you know? Right, right, and that's the thing too. Like I remember us buying when we were doing. Like, I remember buying in the group, uh, the one and thing, like uh, those mixers, one and done with everything in it, the mixer, the beat maker. But we never got it to work, or you couldn't get it to work. <laughs> yeah. Or you needed another part that they didn't tell you about. <laughs> so I remember us buying the four track, and we thought that was golden. Like, oh my god, four track. We can be oh, rappers yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. You know, right, right. And uh, it was the blue one too, like the classic little blue one, you know. But uh, but then the CD programs started being big, so we never got Fruity Loops, but we bought uh, like this Target brand wannabe one. Okay. And it was a kid at the thing, and then we started making songs just me and him. And I was going by Mr. Green, and he was still going uh, by uh, some wild name. He changed his name like four hundred times. You know, like, like some juggalos. Like first it was like AK, then Chaos, and the but like that's the thing with me. Everybody always known me as Mr. Green since I've been like fourteen. Okay. So like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So like people that always see me, like, yeah, you're still doing it. Fuck you, bro. You know. So. So is, but, so, uh, Mr. Green is is it is it this kind of green? I mean, what what is it? Well, okay. So this is the funny part about that. Uh, so like I said, we old school juggalos. blows. You know, your big homies. You know, it was during the war, the classic NMM and ICP war. So you know, fuck, you know, fuck. Fuck, then we taking people's shirts, checking your CDs, fuck you, you know. We ain't no weak, weak-ass pussy clowns, you know. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, we were getting into it, like, kind of an altercation with this other group from, like, a different neighborhood. And uh, it was his big homie and one of mine were fucking with the same chick. You know how that goes, shit, it's war, you know, like, fuck them, you know, fuck us. And it was more than just that. So uh, we got in a fight at school. I got kicked out. And I remember going home and riding a rap, like just being pissed. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I can't use my government name. So I started thinking names, and I was like, shit, shit. you know, uh, Violent J, well, that's for Joe. You know, Esham, that's for Esham. I don't want to, you know, my name. And then I was like, Shag, that ain't his name. And then I started thinking about, like, uh, colors, you know, like Crunchy Black, Gangster Black, Blue Da Vinci. You know, and I was like, ooh, there's nobody named Mr. Green, but everybody likes money. You mm. know, Green, you know, everybody likes that. And then, like, like, green can also be, like, healthy, but it also can be, like, rotten, you know, like, when it's spoiled and fucking okay. current, but it can be life, you know, so there's so many different means. I mean, yeah, you know, of course, you know, <laughs> you know, growing up with one or two, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, it was, it was just, it was something to represent me, and like I said, I'm the little, little brother, so kind of something to put emphasis to my name. I'm Mr. Green, you know, what's up, what's up, you know? I feel green, it's like, be- green as in you're new, you're just getting in, green, green, you yeah. know? Yeah. No, that's right. what's up. And I, and I spelled it like my name. Like, uh, I, instead of green, like it's spelled, I spell G R E A N. And then you can play it around and see how, what my real name is with that. You know okay, that's, that's cool. But, but, you know, so I've always been like that. And people know it. So then we started doing it, the songs with the program. And then one of his big homies' brother's friends was like, oh, bro, I like what you guys are doing. Let, let's do a group. So then we started doing like a group. And then one of my homies, that like uh was more gangster rap with it straight up sound like uh ti but lap like little wayne or sound like little wayne but rap like ti okay he's, in, he's doing a bit right now free my brother signs but uh but he got in the group so it was kind of like our angle to play with everybody out here in the st louis area because he was like definitely more three six gangster with it you know like da 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 and then we were like the juggalo three dudes with it you know okay but like that was the thing. They're from St. Louis. I'm from the outskirts, but they were my homies. So like, they're like, "Oh, it don't matter. You, you little homie, don't fuck. You know, we, we St. Louis. You know, we right. the first. You know, da da da. We juggalos. It don't matter. And uh, so we were the group. We called Wichita's Nation. Did that from like 2007 to about 2012, and then uh, we kind of just smashed because uh, like the big homie, 
it wasn't really going nowhere he wanted. He was like, man, I'm losing money. I gotta, I gotta grow up. Cause he was about, I was 17. Well, I was probably like, uh, 2007. I was about 17. Uh, so like he was probably already almost in his late 20s. So he's like, bro, I gotta grow up. Yeah, of course. Forever. So I was like, all right, you know. And then, uh, my one big homie that rapped like Ti, uh, he he kind of had his own little personal problems, kind of went in his own way. So that was fine. So it was just me and this cat. My, my original friend that got me in with all of them doing it till about 2013. And then me and him had our own personal falling out. You can find out, listen to some music, you know, motivating people, you know, when you get dealt a bad hand, you can still push. Through. That, that's my message with my music. You're not alone. Like, mm. I, that's what I want to get. Like, I know people feel so alone and I've been there too, but I promise you, you're not. If you ever need somebody, somebody's there. I promise you, you know, like you can make it. Yeah, that's like, a dope like message, bro. That, uh, right. And like you said that one time, like, you got some fucking balls if you do it. Because I guarantee, I, I guarantee a lot of people been there and ain't, you know. Oh, talking about uh, killing get, yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. people some people get right there and then something saves them, you know. So yeah. shout out to anybody that ever paid anybody, you know. But, but, yeah, bro, so, like, that's the, that's the majority. Like, it's party music, but it's also fun, you know, tour core, you know, or whatever. I call it wicked shit. But, you know, it's it's for entertainment. It's for you to make feel good. So, you know, when you're listening to my music alone, you're not alone. I'm right there with you. Yeah, you know? that's great, man. That's okay. that's very dope. So, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll be checking it out, man. How much shit you got out there? So, uh, like I said, we were rapping in 2007 is when we were really pushing the group in St. Louis, and we were kind of locally known, but nothing past like Illinois. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, like, we didn't have like I remember these guys from Germany were hitting us up, and that was cool because it was the MySpace days. Yeah, so it was cool because before like you know Facebook was really even big. But, you know, we kind of just fell apart because there was really going where it was like, oh, these people are liking it, but we're not getting paid. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's a lot of work, man. It really is. You got to really it, hustle it, and it, grind so like, so we much. Didn't have at all. Like, I remember this uh, when the group dismantled, it was me and the one kid. This guy tried to sign us, but he was trying to sign us to be more or less ghost riders. Yeah. And we would have kept like 75%, and he would have kept 30 And then in the contract was like, you still owe us 20%. Nah. Like the advance money was, you know what I mean? Like, if for a little kid, if you didn't know what you were signing, yep. you know, you would have got fucked up. Hey, how, I did it. how many times, how many, y'all did a bunch of shows or? Uh... Yeah, uh, like, like uh, when we were with the Nation, the first show we did was a lot of house parties. Okay. So we would show up and like, you know, bombing out. Like, I remember the first show we did is like in June, but we had this Halloween track. And I remember us throwing Halloween in the party <laughs> and throwing like hitting people with candy bags and shit. <laughs> like, it was, <laughs> That's it was funny. some of the funniest shit. But people were loving it because, you know, everybody's drunk and shit and everything. That's dope, but, you know, bro. House party. But, playing uh, house parties, that, that alone sounds dope oh, as fuck how, to me. House parties were always I would have loved to do that people shit. People remember me from that. Like, I remember people in high school were like, damn, bro, you still rapping? Because I graduated, you know, like, it's funny kids and people were like, damn, you graduated? <laughs> damn, you still rapping? Like, damn, you doing shows with Twitch and have songs with Project Pat? Like, yeah, bro, like, I promised you. And back then, I, when I said I was going to do this, I was going to do it. I was just some asshole just sitting on the fucking, you know, like at the bar working for drinking tickets. You know? <laughs> I feel it. Yeah, but, man. Uh, but yeah, so like after we dispersed, it was just me from like 2014 to about 2017. But I still didn't have my rights. And I was really just uh, kind of not worried about criticism, but I wanted to finish product. But I was kind of more or less dicking around too because I didn't really own beats. Yeah. You know, just whatever. That's how we and did too. Yeah. Right. So, but then eventually, like somebody talks into my head, like, hey, we really need to do this. Well, somebody I was working with at the time was like, hey, come over and uh, record. And I had my girl with me at the time. God bless this girl. She's not here right now. And this is one thing, like, you know, she's not here because of that reason. That's why I want to let everybody know you're not alone. I promise. But uh, but she, me and her went over there. And the dude dicked me around for about three hours. And I was supposed to take her out. So, you know, she's already getting pissed. And I didn't even get to rap. You know, so you just think about a girl's mindset. Like, right when we get in the car, I'm getting it. You know, what the fuck? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Everyone. It's like you just do this by yourself for real. Like that was the end of the thing. Like after the yelling, she's like, "You can just really do this on your own, babe." And then about a day later, I thought about it. I was like, "Fuck, I might as well." Well, one of my homeboys from California hit me up. I was like, "Hey, bro, uh, hit this guy up. You know, he's a great producer. He lives out by you. Prime still fuck with you. He's you know knows what he's doing. He's not just some asshole clicking on a button on a computer saying he he knows what he's doing and then charging you twenty bucks or more mm -hmm. for studio time. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, that's how me and Sir Daryl hooked up. My home producer right now, my brother to another mother. You know, and uh, that's Mike Mikey Clark. You know, like we met so good. Like uh, the first beat I bought from him, one of the big St. Louis dudes at the time wanted that same beat, mm. and he was like, "Oh no, I already bought it." 
or somebody already bought it, it's theirs. And usually people were just like, oh, yeah, you're a bigger name. Fuck you, dude. Yeah, right. You can have yep. So that's why I knew this dude was genuine. Yeah, that's what's was, up. You know what I mean? And well, that's just good business. Like, okay, bet, you know. So, yeah, that's how you know that. that's how you know that's a good person to fuck with. You know what I mean? Right. 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 I mean, like he knew what he was doing. Like right when I was over there, it wasn't that you like the snare. <laughs> <laughs> so you got um so you how much shit you got out there as Mr. Green for people to go check out? Okay, so then uh we started rolling the ball in 2017 because uh, you know, like I said, Sir Dale was like a in my head, like, hey, when these big boys play, you gotta own all your rights, your names, you don't want nobody taking your shit. So I, I did all that, and uh, my my bigger brother, on the financial tip, he helped me. He gave me my first grant, and that's how me and Sir Dale did the first tape called Say and Pride. Okay. And we dropped that. He had a Spinnerella exclusive, so they kept push that, too, with it, because he had, like, a distributing deal with them. Like, like legit, like, it, it showed me the, the behind the scenes mm. of what you really need to do to make it work. And then uh, ever since then, from 2017, we've been dropping shit. So there's some exclusives on there, but we're on Spinnerella, Spotify, YouTube, uh Whatever music app, you know, uh, Amazon music, whatever. You so, know, I'm, so I'm on. It's all free, like, paying off the stream. So if you don't even buy nothing for me, like a lot of times I'll press up shit and I'll give it away as promo because I'm an old school, you know, Yeah, yeah. we got oh, you. Yeah. I got your CD, bro. I got your CD. Oh, did yeah. you get You got this? Yeah, I got one, yep. You know oh, hell yeah. Hell I haven't yeah. got, dude, no no offense. I haven't popped in barely anything except for juggle, some juggle. I still have some that are still wrapped from the gathering. So it ain't yeah, you. Yeah. I will be pop, I will be popping that shit in here soon. So what, uh, so is your, so I'm sorry. Yeah. I haven't heard anything either and I'm definitely going to check you out is so what, what level of, uh, like production, mixing and mastering, would you say your music is on? Is it uh, on point? Like, yeah. like, like, that's the funny part. When uh, 2007, when we were in the group, I was doing it and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. It sounds so distorted, but people were still buying it. That's the, the funny aspect, you know what I mean, of it. You know, that's how old and underground this shit was at first. People were buying anything that was cool. Yeah. You know, like, that's, that's how I feel like Dark Hat blew up because they were fucking raw, but they were professional about it. Yeah. Like, I got a song with Damien, he, he even told me, he's like, bro, you're doing it. Like, fuck yeah, bro, keep on doing it, you know? So that's that, that helped, you know? Shout out Damien Quinn. Red Dragon. Right, we're yeah, so, uh, bro, you I mean with with your um with your level of uh uh with with all your experience and shit that you're telling us, like I I'm I'm amazed that you haven't like tried how come you haven't tried to like perform at the gathering? I mean you're you gotta be fucking doing it harder than like goddamn Wicked Wood or whoever with the other weirdo guy that we saw on that other <laughs> stage, you know what I mean? Like come on, I man. I appreciate that. Not that them, but I appreciate that. It's you know, you know, just on the grind, like, uh, I want it to be organic. Like, I did write Rob, you know, shout out Rob, you know. I did, I've been do, writing the right people and shit. Okay. So, uh, just playing, you know, I played one of the little, little stages, not not even the Reed J stage, but one of my homie stages, like a Sex Waffle. They played at the, at the side stage. Yeah, so yeah, I saw, we, we met the Sex Waffles guy. He was very nice. Yeah, yeah they were cool. Yeah. They seemed super cool. Yeah, he's one of my big loves. And uh, I played at his uh, camp. He's oh, like, cool. Out, so, you know, me and, uh, Beastmaster, me and Beastmaster played the same night. <laughs> oh, we, that's you, sweet, you know bro. what? We we probably fucked up not going over there and meeting him and getting, yeah, dude. you know, hanging out with that because they seemed like they they were the they had. I would like to see like, Beastmaster perform too. They seem like they seem like they knew how to party, bro. D- bro, we're, okay. we're, we're going <laughs> y'all. If we get if we do a deck one delt stage, it'll be Beastmaster, fucking Mister Green. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lil, uh, Lil Ninja just said he subbed. So, <laughs> oh hell yeah, there you go. Lil, Lil Ninja hey, just I'm subbed. Hit you up for beats, buddy. I'm hit you up. Definitely. There, there you go. Yeah. Lil, yeah. Lil Ninja's killing it on some beats, bro. If you need beats, hit him up, yeah. man. <laughs> and that's the thing, dude. Like uh, with me and Daryl, they used to tell me like, let's get more producers, like because. Everybody knows our sound. Now it's time for you to know, like, because I got random songs. Like, the funniest thing, uh, I got a song with Scum, and uh, when he heard it, he was like, you know, hear my shit, like, so, you know, probably checked it out, and he's like, hey, I ain't saying this, say this, but you were like great to this shit. You be crying about bitches, and then you cut them up. And I'm bringing Scum to St. Louis for my first show, for my uh, Monster Mash, October 15th in St. Louis. No, that's yeah, what's up, you bro. You boys come out. I got tickets for you. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. Monster Mash? What's but, that? What's Monster Mash? Uh, that's my first show, me and Replicon Radio. Uh, they're helping me host it, but it's my actual first show I'm hosting. Oh, I'm dope. I'm bringing Triple FD, so Scum and Insane Poetry are headlining with me. And, you uh, gonna live stream it? Yeah. Live stream it and all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're definitely going to do everything. Uh, I'm doing an exclusive shirt at Replicon there, and then uh, we're going to give out, you know, do the old Hollow Wicked vibe, give out a free song for everybody dressed up. We're doing a Halloween contest. Oh, that's dope, bro. We're doing a big, you know, like I, I wanted 
definitely like make this something big. Like I said, like if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. You yeah, know? Man. yeah, man. I'm excited for that. I can see that being pretty yeah. fu- pretty fucking sweet. Right. Especially like Triple M F T, like for being a you know for first you know, that's a good name to have. You know, it's not just like hey, Mr. Green come to my show. It's like hey, I got Triple M F T. If you didn't get to go to Gore Fest, like I missed it. I was supposed to go to Gore Fest. I was supposed to play, but I was supposed to go. But I'm going to Halloween instead in Attack of the Ninjas. Mm. So just to play around the work aspect of my nine to five, you know, I, I had to miss Gore Fest. So I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna bring them here. And that, so is that is that this is your that's happening this year? Yeah, October 15th. Oh, that's yep. what's up, bro. Hell yeah. Well, hopefully it goes well, man. Congrats on that. That sounds hey, very dope. Yeah, we're definitely going to live stream and do a whole bunch of shit, so definitely. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, me and Dale have been doing that, and that's kind of how uh, the Super was my first gathering I went to, and that's how I met Replicon. Mm. So out by me, they adopted a highway, you know, like the adopted highway sign. Yeah. And oh, wow. I, I, <laughs> I walked up to him, and I was like, hey, I see your sign every day. And, you know, where I stay at, you know, there's, there's a lot of meth at, you know? So they're like, what the fuck? Like, where the fuck you from, little kid? You know? And I was like, I'm from fucking Jeff Cole County, St. Louis, you know? And they're like, man, for real, I'm like, yeah, bro, check out my tape. <laughs> and I handed it to them. That's cool, man. And then we started building a relationship. And then uh, my first show, being Mr. Green by myself, uh, was the East Town show when he came off, uh, I want to say, the Dead of Winter tour, or one of the tours that, like, he was just doing, like, everything, like, uh, this is before COVID, you know, obviously, and they were supposed to host it, and then, like, I hit him up first, like I said, I hit him up first, like, hey, you got the flyer, I'm trying to promote the shit, da 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 and then, like, oh, yeah, and then it got canceled, and then they got rebooked with a different promoter, and I still did it, so, like, event- like I said, eventually everybody always meets, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. and what's funny about that, Freaky P from uh, Rubicon used to have this other artist back in the day, R.I.P. Havoc, that was doing, like, the vampire thing, like, the gimmick. Like, I remember him before I remember uh, Kung Fu Vampire doing it. You mm. know what I'm saying? It's St. Louis. in St. Louis. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm. But, but, like, that was one of his first artists, and I remember them cats doing it when I was a kid in the crowd. So it's just funny how circles always, you know, yeah, intertwine circle. and come back, oh, yeah. That's what's so, up, bro. Uh, that's what's cool about yeah, the Juggalo so, like, community, you know. Uh, right. So that's how I met Rubicon. We did an interview. And uh, it was like an exclusive. It was one of the first exclusives. And then uh, we built a connection. And then uh, Freaky was like, hey, let's go to the gathering. You know, I'm probably going to be the only one out the team going. If you want to roll? I'm like, fuck yeah, bro, let's roll. You know? And that's kind of how I got my press pass with everything. You know, so such as that, Rob. <laughs> well, I'll say, I'll say, man, Replicon's lucky to have you on their team, man. I yeah. mean, you're 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 a, you're a high energy, uh, infectious personality. So now- I, I think you, I, I mean, it's a it's a good good catch right oh yeah there. natural born hustler man yeah. we, we love it <laughs> yeah, and that's like my brother's like he's he, he wanted me to go away from the group because when he gave me the money for the first project with sir dale he was like i don't know them dudes i'm not saying nothing but you're dragging them to the studio or you're, you're <laughs> you know like like you really want to do it, but they're doing it to like put it on their facebook or take a picture yeah a little bit you know it's like you really want to do it because i don't care you know i I want to make people feel good when they listen to my shit. Yeah, you know, I want. Yeah, I want to keep bro. on doing this. If this is gonna be my bread and butter, then it's the merch game. Yeah, I got the best merch. Come fuck with me. You know. That's what's up, bro. Everybody, artists. That's that's the most money. So we're trying to just really gravitate towards that. Do new shirts, hoodies, everything. So. We love it, man. You're hustling, yeah, man. I'll we be love ex- it. I'd be excited about the merch for sure, man. You, I mean, right. just just have just having a you know just seeing that replicon merch it's like jesus man so, i know like ah yeah some sick shit you get that you know get some merch out like that oh yeah yeah man that's what's up we, we, we look forward to seeing how that goes bro appreciate that for sure oh. yeah like uh, that's the story bro like you know getting down the crown i've always felt connected like it wasn't about where you're from who you are what it, what is you you know just that camaraderie and like uh growing up like i said i'm adopted i'm a very big on uh Nurture and nature over or, uh, nurture over nature, you know mm. that old philosophy. You know you could be in a fucked up environment, but if you have a good nurturing system, you can be anything. You know, yeah. it's like it's on you. Do whatever the fuck you want. You know, that's a that's a great message, bro. Mm. We we love it. I was just talking about that to my wife the other day. Nature versus nurture. We were going in on that. Hmm. All right, bro. Because you look at a lot of motherfuckers in those states. Oh, I'm, it's because I'm this or that. It's because where I'm from. It's like, well, yeah, but I mean. Yeah, just down the time you you know people been there. You know? Yeah, you still got to put in the work, man. That's it. That's that's the bottom line, right? But uh, but yeah, bro. So uh, right now, like I said, uh, me and you guys was fucking from now on. Me and ICP was weed. I I think that was really cool, man. You know, maybe maybe next year it'll be uh, if we have like in the back, 
Like if they had us on stage, I think that would have gravitated more people towards us too. Like if you yeah, were oh, yeah, lined yeah, up, yeah. On the panel, you know, like I like a uh, uh, Comic Con, like something like that. Like yeah. Yeah, That'd they need dope. to get a better podcast set up next year. At least a better tent with some uh, actual, you know, walls power. that we can back up to. And some fucking power. Yeah, some you good. Know. Yeah, yeah. For <laughs> the most important. <laughs> yeah. So that's what's up. All right, Mr. Green, we're going to let you go, bro. Do you have anything else you want to say? Anything you want people to check out before you uh, before we let you go? Uh, yeah, I'll say real quick. Uh, October uh, 15th, like I said, it's Monster Mash featuring Triple MFG, Mr. Green, many more. Check it out. It's started by uh, Replicon Radio, Mr. Green. Then October 28th is my uh, Halloween tape. Like everybody knows, Juggalos drop a Halloween tape. Yeah. Uh, Halloween. It's going to be on everything. Check it out. And then uh, shout out Deck One and Del. You know, go check out Replicon Radio. Everybody keep on doing it, you know. Thanks, bro. We appreciate that. Oh, okay. oh yeah. One more thing, because I seen you guys doing the Man to Myth thing. Uh, I remember going to that show. It was my first push show. It was, it was Jamie Clay. It was just them. It was who? Child was there. Yeah, it was just Jamie and Blaze. Just oh. Like it wasn't even pushing set. It was, yeah, yeah. It, I think it was when uh, he did that interview. Remember when, like, you know, he went crazy and he did the Fago Lovers interview and whatnot? Who? Jay? No, no not that Child. Oh, I don't remember oh, that. Oh, oh, I never was, watched that. Was it, uh... Wait, which it one was, like was right it? Chain it was like right around okay. Oh, yeah. He, he was going through a hard time. I, yeah, I remember. Was he wearing a basketball jersey? Yeah, that yeah. Was he wearing a, yeah. was it a Cleveland jersey? I can't remember what it was. I, I, I want to say so, but like he had no makeup, but he had the braids up. Okay. And it was like, I think it was like a reply why he wasn't on tour on the man man. Yeah, yeah, that's what I it was. Like going there and they're like, no, he ain't here. And the first time fucking seeing Twisted, it was just Jamie and Blaze. Oh, that's you know, weird. Like, Blaze hyping up Jamie. It was a dope ass concert. Don't get me wrong, but it, you know what I'm saying. Like that's what's so funny to me because that was my first. I still have the shirt, you know. Oh, that's damn. Great. That that's a rare ass first, right yeah, there. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah bro. Because like I remember, like my brothers are old. So they remember Twisted being on like the Hatchet Rising tour, and then uh, you know, fucking outside, you know, or uh, we caught them out of space and shit. Mm. That was that was one of their first tours, you know, going oh, there yeah. and shit. Hell yeah, dude. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for sharing that, bro. Um, shout out to you, everybody. Check out Mr. Green on Spotify or iTunes. I'm sure he's available and all that shit, right? Oh, definitely, definitely. All right, bro. Well, check th- out deck one down. <laughs> thanks, bro. We, we appreciate you, man. Uh, all right, we'll hey, see. Man. We'll see you later, man. We'll have you on again sometime. All right. All right, man. It was nice hey. talking, bro. See you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Green, y'all. Mm. He's the shit. Ah!